so uh, what i have written the quote here is uh, best odds in investing line aligning with the goat way goat means uh, greatest of all time so oh. <laughs> uh, the best so you know like in all uh, everything like in say tennis like you must always people should uh, for longevity you should be like say for example nadal djokovic federer goats greatest of all times or cricket you know tendulkar uh, or kohli or something like that so we have to be with the guys who have uh, we have to invest like the people who have who are the best of all times in investing and not like uh, you know small uh, people who just come up and then they do something and then they go out of the thing so you know and the biggest are those two 90 year old guys 90 year old people who are still you know thinking uh, long term so they are the best examples okay as i see the market setup uh, us debt ceiling is the biggest problem and us politically is pretty uh, divided but the default is conceivable and what happens when the default is that their credit rating goes down and their bond yields go up and the market corrects in a big way so that is a risk now uh, let's talk about our setup sbi results were very good so the they showed strong loan growth higher margins and a sharp fall in provisions so it's big size it's uh, market share improved return ratios and a good asset quality cycle should favor it to be uh, you know re-rated so sbi in my view should command higher than the long term average valuation multiple of price to book of around 1 and it can go to 1.2 to 1.3 price to book in and in case you also consider the earnings from its subsidiaries so it implies that uh, from its present level of around 585 590 it can go to 700 odd levels second is uh, if you have seen all fm fmcg companies have come up with good results it seems that there are green shoots of rural demand and everybody is optimistic about future consumption as inflation eases so and it is reflected in their prices so they are all doing well now if you saw the results of uh, last few days indigo was great so mm-hmm. it, it is a beneficiary of the lower oil prices and its performance has improved significantly and it has grabbed market share now the best result in my view in the last few days was tata motors is again one of the stocks where the some of the part valuations would really uh, you know take it up and it has got roughly around 84% market share in the domestic ev market so and the jlr uh, uh, profits have boosted because firstly the raw material prices have gone down and the chip problem has reduced so tata motors should also do well from here i think 600 is uh, possible now if you see the healthcare the max healthcare has had has aggressive expansion plans and it is again doing well and it is relatively cheaper as compared to apollo hospitals and all of this tata if you see the order books the order book wise HL and Thermax, I have st- uh, came out with strong results and are likely to do well despite small amount of consolidation which is taking place. Now. Okay. Now uh, the topic of today's thing was as to how to value uh, stocks, right? The easiest uh, way to uh, value stocks is price to equity, uh, price to earning uh, ratio (PE), which is how it is called. It is market price to EPS. it shows that actually how much a investor is ready to pay that is p times the earnings for it today and lower the p it is better now how do you find a p of a stock you compare with competitors peers public industry average now the one more thing is that stocks in different sectors trade in different valuation that is p ranges like metals uh, generally at single digit uh, p while fmcgs are in 50 to 60 p so they trade in different p ranges now we will discuss later as to why it is so 
now mostly the stocks with higher earning growth potential have higher pe ratios so but we cannot use a single pe level across all stocks to infer whether the stock is attractive expensive or cheap or not we but of one of the better better ways to look at it is is to see the historical pe's of a stock and see if the current pe is near the higher end higher end of the range or near the lower end of the range. i generally see the average pe of the stock and in case the stock is on an uptrend then wait for the average pe over last 4 5 years to reach so as to see what is the correct level to buy the stock so how to value stocks uh lower pe can be uh, due to bad news basically example is there in front of us is infosys uh, bad quarter uh, bad guidance and the stock correct but high pe also doesn't means expensive there is a premium being given for uh, confidence of investors that is where the pe is high now there are uh, in the pe also if you see uh, there are two there is a numerator and denominator now numerator everybody knows is the uh, right. current price current price but the it is in the denominator where there is uh, you know there is some variance like in earning per share which is the denominator it can be current earning so it becomes current pe it can be the last 12 months uh, earnings uh, per share so then it becomes trailing 12 months pe that is pe ttn or forward pe that is the next four quarters or 12 months uh, earnings are projected and then you know it's a forward pe so the only thing is that when you compare the uh, the ratios have to be same otherwise then there is some uh, difference of opinion now how to judge higher the growth rate the higher is the pe if uh, rest everything is the same so the stocks with higher growth rates are generally given higher pe's example are adani stocks where uh, they had uh, great uh, growth rate so they were given higher pe but higher the risk also the pe is lower examples are basically all the psus or all the uh, some of the small caps and all that where the, if the risk of earnings is more uh, the pe is are generally lower or even uh, metals where uh, because of the variability of earnings due to the metal cycle or the economic cycle the pe's are generally given lower because of risk risk to the earnings now firms with lower reinvestment needs will have higher pe the reason is if the requirement of a firm is of lower reinvestment of profits into the capex then it will have it will give higher dividends and it will have higher return on equity hence it will have higher profits and hence the earnings uh, would be higher so it has it can be given higher pe hence if you would have seen the ones which are in capex cycle or require more investment to grow the business are generally given lower pe but now there is a, a divergence here that high growth firms tend to have high risk and higher investment also so uh, there again you have to make a balance because Uh, if the firms are high growth ones again example is uh, say for example adani park but it has higher risk also because there is an execution risk there is a credit risk and all those other issues and it requires higher investment to grow hence we have to look for balance and that means a stock which is cheap with no good reason to be cheap so we have to look for those uh, cases uh, search for those ones which are not yet discovered for some particular reasons they are cheap but they are the cycle is turn now uh, so what do we have to look for we have to look for low pe high expected growth in earnings low risk and high roe high roe means basically how efficiently the company is generating its growth how efficiently it is using its uh, capital now there is a formula also which has been given i'll just uh, cover that formula uh, and there are number of other formulas also so the variables in this are interest rates earning growth rate and roe because if the interest rates go up 
the PE generally goes down. If there is an earning growth rate is higher, the PE is higher. And in case the return on equity is higher, then again the PE is higher. So the formula is as given 1 minus G by R divided by K minus G, where G is the earning growth rate. R is the return on incremental equity and K is the cost of equity that is risk free rate plus equity risk premium. So now what I did was I had used this formula to find out what should be the P of uh, Infosys and Adani Enterprise. So I found that as per this formula the Infosys P should be 31. Presently it is at around 22 P. This is the uh, trailing uh, 12 months P and Adani Enterprise should be 10 where it is at 83. So you can make out that uh, from these two examples only that for Infosys since the uh, mood and momentum is poor it is trailing below its uh, intrinsic P and Adani Enterprise because the momentum is good and the mood is good and the people are interested in this hence it is trailing much above its uh, intrinsic uh, value. We will see other aspects also. Now this last formula is also a kind of a, a, some similar to the discounted cash flow formula or DCF. DCF is the method of estimating the current value of an investment by taking into account its future cash flow. So what you do is you see the cash flows of every year, estimate the cash flows of every year and then discount them or find find the net present va value of the cash flows for uh, at as many number of years you want so as to find out the present value of your money. So this is called discounting. So in this case, R is a discount rate which is basically weighted average cost of capital. So it is the rate at which investor expects to receive an uh, on average from a firm for financing its assets. So like if my expectation is 15%. So the R would be 15 for a stock in DCF. So by DCF, I get a net present value of a stock and what I then I compare the net present value of the stock with the current market price. And if the net present value of the stock is higher than the current market price, that means the stock is cheap and it can be bought. And in case uh, as per the DCF, the net present value is lower than the current market price. That means the stock is expensive. The problem here is, is that you have to estimate the future cash flows. Hence, it uh, there can be uh, uh, errors in this. The So the best way out is that by using DCF, you find the uh, various options or various scenarios. The best case scenario, the, the worst case scenario for cash flows and the in the middle path that is the average scenario. So based on that you get estimates of future cash flows and then based on that you find the net present value of the stock. Another uh, ratio which I see which I generally prefer is price earning to growth ratio. Is the stock's P ratio divided by growth rates of its earning for a specified time period. So I find it to be good uh, ratios to see because Actually, if you really see, the P is actually the growth rate of a stock, should be equal to the growth rate of a stock. So, uh, uh, whatever is the growth rate, that much P should be given to a stock. So, P ratio, uh, P, PG ratio, that is price earning to growth ratio, is used to determine a stock's value while also factoring in the company's expected earning growth and it provides a more complete picture than the more standard P ratio. So a PG lower than 1 is the best, suggesting that a company is relatively undervalued. So this is what I also look at. Now let's take a few examples. Uh, we had discussed last time two stocks, so I will discuss both of them. First one was RVNL. Now this has gone up uh, tremendously. It has gone up from around 50-60 level to now nearly double. It went up to around 130 and now has come down to 160. So the current market price is around 116. The P presently is 16.8. PT is 0 0.69. And the median P of this stock for last one year is around 8.9. But what I wanted to highlight here is if you see the, the sales growth, the Trailing 12 month sales growth is around 13%. Mm -hmm. 
below the below the uh, last five or three years sales growth profit growth at generally the same level the stock price cagr those stock prices have gone up 265 percent and return on equity is around 20 percent so that is why i felt that it's a expensive stock now there's one more factor which i want to highlight here which is that uh, why it has gone up because uh, this stock is aligned with this government policy of infrastructure creation but the point here is that a uh, lot it has got a lot of orders you know but i have seen with number of companies the order book doesn't translates into earnings we have seen it with number of other companies also like kac or even sometimes lnt also that it has it shows big order books but it doesn't translates into earnings because of high input costs and low margins so that is why i was uh, saying that since the stock has gone up too fast too high there is a need to wait though if you start comparing with other stocks of the same in private sector like say for example which are involved in infrastructure creation uh, you will realize that uh, this is relatively cheap so this you need to see and in case uh, it makes a bottom say i personally feel that it will go down to around 100 and that should be a good place to buy this or it goes to its median peak the other uh, example i want to take is aircon uh, again uh, the cmp 78.3 p is 9.81 pg ratio is 0.82 and median p is 6.7 of last one year so it is higher than its median p but what i want to highlight here is that in aircon the sales growth is much really double of last 4 5 years similarly profit growth is 3 to 4 times though stock price has doubled and return in equity is the same but it has got slightly more scope and it is relatively uh, cheaper so if you get it around 55 60 again it will be a good level to buy for long term but will and these are again involved in various uh, railway engineering projects the scenario is it is less than 1 and then the p is near the median any other thing and, and also uh, the growth yeah growth and okay. uh, what are the projections like uh, is the is the revenue going up is the uh, profit going up is the are the margins going up like uh, today morning somebody was asking about a stock and the margins are declining ah dv's lab sorry right yeah. so if you see though it is better q and q the margins have come down from 40% to 25%. So how will the stock go up if the margins are declining? Yeah. So we are thinking of historical prices, but we have to see if the margins are declining. Uh, any website or uh, any site which can which gives out the PEG? Peg yeah, ratio? Screener, screener gives. OK, it gives a uh, peg yeah, ratio. Yeah, screener, you can uh, set it. Like I had shown you the, the clips from the screener uh -huh. also. You can uh, put anything you want, register on screener, and it will give you what all ratios you want to see. Okay. Another question about this APL Apollo, which we discussed last week. Yeah, yeah. So APL Apollo now, uh, technically, it is below uh, 200 demo. Yeah. And now uh, the conviction is there in the company. Correct. This quarter so, was weak. This quarter yeah. was weak. Yeah. Right? So uh, it has corrected, and uh, this is the time to slowly accumulate uh, such stocks. But then you you also say that below 200 demo, you should not touch a stock. Uh, no, I, I am saying below 200 DMA, the stock goes in uh, in a bear phase, right? Yeah. But that is uh, you have to see what is the reason for it. Okay. Right. It is what I also said was uh, good companies will have one or two bad cycles. Yeah. Bad quarters. Now yeah. that is the time to accumulate those stocks. And but uh, once it will go to 200 DMA, we have to see what is the how it will work. So that is why I have started actually accumulating uh, APL Apollo. Okay. 
So Thanks. it's okay. You lie low for three six months, accumulate yeah. it as much as possible. Say okay. I got it at two hundred DMA. Now I'll let it fall five ten percent. Buy more, and let's see how uh, it works out. Okay. So uh, you see, you can only buy good companies in bad times, and yeah. not in uh, because in case there is no nothing fundamentally wrong with the stock. You see. Uh, you see now, if you see the biggest, uh, the biggest the positive for all stocks would be the rate cycle. Hmm. If the inflation is going down and the government is going to do spend money, all of them will uh, do, start now showing better margins. Hence, their earnings will improve from it. And all this uh, talk about uh, uh, correction in June, etc. Whenever everybody is talking about correction, that means it will not happen. <laughs> so, hence, it it is it is a good opportunity actually. So, okay. uh, you know, you get good stocks at good prices. Uh, it is very good. Hence, uh, like I started getting into Thermex also. Okay. So, because it has corrected, and uh, I was looking for an opportunity. They have good order book, and they are getting into multiple uh, sectors. So, nothing wrong. And I would look to get into LNT also now because I sold it off at the higher level. In case it goes down more, say around another hundred, two hundred rupees. So any suggestion, uh, any suggestion on the uh, percentage, uh, rough percentage of say uh, large caps, mid caps, and small caps one should keep in the portfolio? Uh, nothing like that, right? Okay. Nothing like that. Uh, you, it's your uh, wherever you feel comfortable. Because uh, you buy uh, all large caps, then you they will not outperform the market, yeah. right? They will move according to the market, and then you will feel disgusted. But if you buy small caps, they have high beta, so they will fall more when the market corrects. And uh, if you see in India, the in India the small cap uh, you know moves every three four years. Mm -hmm. So after three third or fourth year, they have moved. Then they lie low, and then we wait for another three years. So after that, the cycle comes. Last time, like they moved in 2017, then they moved in 2020 and 21, and now hope for next year. So uh, it corrected after that. You must have seen 22, 20, uh, 22, and uh, 23. Some part of it, they corrected. Small cap index corrected 20, 30 percent. Yes. So again, so every three, four years with the with the interest rate cycle, they start moving. And we start keep thinking of the earlier price as a reference. 